Hello, I am Rachel Meliotis. I am a senior editor with uh, O'Reilly, and I am here with Doug Fink. He is a software developer and author of Windows PowerShell for Developers. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. All right, I got a list of questions here, so I'll start right in. So, uh, PowerShell version 3.0 coming out. What are like the top two or three things that people should be most excited about? Uh, great question. Version 3 brings a lot to the table. Um, brings a lot of new commandlets, sort of fundamental building blocks in PowerShell. Uh, one of the key things is workflow. So now in just using straight PowerShell syntax, you can describe workflows uh, as things that we used to be able to do only in C Sharp. Uh, and it'll make it a lot easier uh, and a much more interesting to work with in uh, version 3. Uh, in addition, we have things like better ways that you can interact with the web. So there's a lot of things out there that actually have JSON feeds or XML feeds and REST APIs. Now you can use something called invoke, invoke REST method or invoke web request to actually interact with these things, get the data back, and have it automatically convert JSON and XML into PowerShell objects and it makes quick use, it makes it a very easy job to slice and dice information straight from the web. I'd say those are some of the top top pieces in, in version 3. Cool. In terms now, of you mentioned uh, commandlets. Didn't it go from something like 400 to like 2,000 something? Uh, good point. Uh, that They did go from 400 to two, over 2,000, close to 2,300, and that's on Windows Server 2012. Okay. But it also increased even at, for Windows 8 mm -hmm. and for the levels that are going to be available for Windows 7. It's increased significantly. So basically, out of the box, Microsoft does our work for us, so we can just get to, get to use those pieces. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. So your book is uh, Windows PowerShell for Developers. So tell us a little bit about why developers specifically should use PowerShell. Uh, that's a great question. I think uh, PowerShell is an underutilized tool that belongs in every developer's toolbox. It's We've seen scripting over over the decades. I come from the mainframe background, and I've seen different kinds of scripting technologies from there to Unix to PEs. And uh, PowerShell just makes it much much more differently. The way the object pipeline works, where you're piping objects uh, instead of parsing text, um, and it's all based on .NET. So even when you hit roadblocks inside of PowerShell, you can always reach into the framework or there are simple ways that you can use C Sharp Construct and blend that right into your PowerShell work. Uh, basic workflows that we have today, in terms of how you work on a machine, you can automate so many aspects of the Windows way that you can just save time, you can make things repeatable, and you can get your job done much more quickly without having to memorize or do all types of clicking and, and typing. You can write these little commandlets, little functions, just to automate your day at a much faster pace. Cool. So that's one of the reasons why I think it's neat. Sounds like it's worth it. Um, yes, it is. So tell me sort of maybe for somebody that's sort of new to PowerShell, how does PowerShell fit in with the Windows 8, Windows Server 2012 ecosystem? Well, with Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012, uh, for, at least from an IT pro perspective, uh, you can now begin to administer boxes uh, and through automation. Rather than going through the GUI, which is fine, when you want to manage a, a range of machines or a farm of machines, Power makes that much, much more simpler. Um, there are a lot, again, as you mentioned before, is over 2,300 commandlets on Windows Server that's available. So there's a lot more that you can get done right out of the box. Um, Microsoft Exchange, for example, is a, is a great idea, is a great example of why. Uh, you can walk up to Exchange and you can say, I want to change the quota on all these different mailboxes. And you can sit there and you can click and find the user and then change the quota. But now you can actually capture that as a script and say, well, I want to do it for 3,000 users or 4,000 users. So same ideas apply at Windows 8 level. Uh, you can administer your box or, from my perspective as a developer, since I'm working with .NET and I'm working within the Windows operating system, there are so many different pieces I can just automate, whether I'm using Visual Studio or I'm using web or I'm trying to bring up browsers or just all kinds of different kinds of utilities at the disk level and so on. Um, Windows 8 and 2012 actually just brings more to the table that I can take advantage of. So it sounds uh, like kind of making your code faster and, and like you said, automating. 
It's automation. And then from that automation, you can actually get repeatability. Even if, you're, if you automate something that doesn't work well, then the idea that's kind of nice there is once you automate it, then you can begin to measure it and then you can improve it. And then you can apply that improve it, improvement into your scripts so that the process gets better, better, and faster. Cool. Is the idea. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Um, a lot of, it seemed to me when I was working with you on this book that the community is really strong and a lot of great ideas come from the community. Can you talk a little bit about the PowerShell community? Sure. I think that's one of the uh, key aspects to what PowerShell brings to the table. We've seen that the community has been important in things like Perl and, and, and Ruby and the Python world, and the same idea is being applied to uh, where PowerShell uh, comes, comes into play. Uh, there's numerous, many of us blog, there's over 50 or 60 uh, PowerShell MVPs, Microsoft Value Professionals, across the globe. Uh, we come up and we provide information through our blogs and through speaking at conferences about PowerShell. We're typically always available to answer questions to get over the uh, rough spots of PowerShell or for people ramping up and trying to learn. Um, recently, within the last week, PowerShell.org came online. I'll be moderating a forum there on uh, PowerShell for developers, so it's a place that you can come and ask questions. There's six other uh, forums that are going to be available up there for IIS, for advanced scripting, for WMI, uh, just to name a couple. Uh, it's a very active community. People are very excited and passionate about PowerShell. And there's guys like uh, the Hey Scripting blog uh, out of Microsoft run by Ed Wilson. He puts out information on a weekly, daily basis from guest bloggers, as well as from what he knows about PowerShell. He's an expert at it. He's got a couple of books out. Uh, so we're very active in the community. We, it's, it's really the only way that PowerShell will succeed over time through this kind of an operation. That's great. I didn't know about the site. That's wonderful. Yeah. So what do you think the future of PowerShell is in general? Good question. Well, we're just seeing version 3 now. Uh, we saw version 2 back in 2009. Uh, I think version 3 is really going to change the shape of what you do with Windows. Uh, I think a lot more people are going to come to the table. Um, once people start understanding the power of this kind of automation and that this automation is definitely innovative compared to what we've seen over the years, uh, we're going to see things like DevOps, I think, t take a bigger and broader approach where developers and operations come together and are able to uh, provide more robust solutions to getting their applications built and deployed in a faster way. Uh, we're going to see a reduction in, in costs and capture a lot of ideas that we used to capture in Excel step-by-step -step processes, we can now capture them in scripts and actually execute them to get the job done, which is a lot easier uh, than having some person be around who has to read the list and figure out what they did first, what they did next. Um, as far as where this thing can go, the sky's the limit. We'll see what uh, Microsoft has to provide. I know for that uh, coming out of Microsoft, they really can't ship any new product for the server without it having a PowerShell interface. So PowerShell is coming to, uh, to everybody in the short term. Great. Sounds good. So uh, yeah. final question for you. Can you tell sure. us maybe your top one or two uh, tricks in PowerShell that are your favorites? Top tricks. That's a good one. Um, I do a lot of speaking on PowerShell, and one of the ones that I like to do is in version 2 of PowerShell in three lines of code, I can actually walk up to an RSS XML feed off of a blog, and in three lines of code, I can actually pull down the titles and the dates these things were published. Hmm. I use that a lot in what I do because I follow several hundred feeds in, out there. So I sometimes want to get a snapshot. I use three lines of uh, PowerShell, and I can point that at a range of different uh, target sites. What's nice is when you move into, pow into PowerShell version 3, I can take those three lines and I can get it down to a single line of code. It's that kind of power that lets you begin to think about the real problems you want to try to solve. Um, that's probably one of the top tricks I like, how I can slice and dice information off the web. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. It's been very interesting. And um, good luck with the book. I know it's going to do really well. Thank you very much. Thank you.